All right, let's document um, what we're looking at here. There you go. I've cleaned that up. Um, still see some moisture around that base. But we'll see if we have a pool when we're done today. Cleaned that up. Um, so there's no residual oil right now. I did see some moisture right at the quick drain, but I've already confirmed that at least statically, that's not dripping anything. So I'll look for telltale signs later today coming from the base of the dipstick on down. And then if that's the case, we'll inspect this and replace that washer at the base. I got a lot more going on here than Rayman does, although uh, Rayman on YouTube, auto mechanic guy, does good YouTube, and I'm thinking about him with the storm coming. So I'm trying to put together a video here um, on version 10.3, and at the same time, um, I think I already explained to you in the hangar, um, I saw signs of uh, a slight oil leak, so I'm running that back down. So safety of flight is absolutely first. And everything else is second. Um, the Hero GoPro 4, which I had installed, simply to get a picture of the engine, the left engine exhaust. Um, that's what I put that in for. I had to start it because I can't talk to it under the wing. Uh, such is life. I'm gonna play with that. First thing we're going to see if the iPad links, uh, if it if it uh, connects right away. And then we'll know we're good on the flight home. Um, I didn't get it to connect till I was all the way almost right at the airport. That's when I figured out all the things I had to do to make it work. Um, now we're going to see if it reconnects. It uh, looks for an IP address, which I don't necessarily understand because the IP address of my iPad will change every time it connects to a different Wi-Fi. However, they might have some system. It should be looking at the MAC address in my opinion, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it connects. And then I'll, I'll report back on that. Um, what else? I've had a, a, a timer go off for the oil change reminder that was in the old system. It transitioned to the new system, but I don't see it in the list. So I'm hoping it didn't get um, unobtainable, um, if you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is clear out all of the timers that I can. Um, once I get rid of them, we're going to see if I get any repeated reminders of the oil change that I can't change. That might be a problem, but so far so good. All of my settings from the old system to the new system, including the adjustment for pitch attitude, um, work fine. They transition fine. My user information transition fine. So I don't foresee any problems, um, but I just want to make sure. So I'll be doing a number of flights, at least once a week, up until the end of the month when uh, I'm taking a, doing a family vacation trip uh, for people on board the airplane. Um, so I want to make sure that I understand the systems. Nothing really big has changed um, in operation of the system. <clears throat> and we'll go from there. All right. Thanks for coming along. Let's go flying. Okay, I'm going to go to AUX first. And go to timers. And I'm going to clear that event timer. Power on takeoff.
drip timer. Okay, I don't see any oil timer, so I'm not going to worry about it for now. Well, Tower, Trooper 4. Trooper 4, Mr. Tower. Trooper 4, lifting from the trauma center and move back down to summit. Trooper 4, class Delta transition, approved known course, altimeter 3017. 3017, Trooper 4. I just developed a flight plan, activated it. Coming over to the iPad. Clear everything out. Four flight is the only thing running. Go to four flight, go to flight plan. I don't see anything in terms of linking. Oil pressures are good. Caution four crane point four eight nautical miles south of Wilmington at sixty feet AGL flagged. Five Juno Just ten loaded contact from Wilmington Airport the for flight plan. No problem. Service. Did hook up. Read back all runway, hold short instructions and assign runway, advise on this contact to Movement on the chart. It'll it'll keep me centered um, the whole way. Welcome to ground. Good morning, November eight three three Delta Fox at the West Tees. Taxi for a VFR southbound. Um, I put in. Uh, first of all, I haven't seen anything come up on the timer for the oil change. Hopefully, that won't happen. Um, I couldn't delete any other timers from there, so I know it's not there. Um, it's not in that segment anyway. So hopefully, there's not a glitch where it's going to stay there forever. Until I get it fixed. What else? Um, synthetic vision. That looks pretty. And now I have data. I have traffic on the left-hand side. I like that. I like that display. So we're going to play with that. Um, I got the visual in here, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, I'm just going to go down and fly and approach with a hold. Out of Georgetown. And then come back. Short of 3-2, Fox 2, ready to go, VFR South. Twin Comanche 833, Delta Fox, right, Wilmington Tower, wind 33013. Runway 3-2, clear for takeoff, left turn approved on course, southbound. 3-3, 3, three uh, two, zero, uh, correction. Runway 3-2, clear for takeoff, and uh, set, turn southbound is approved for 3 Delta Fox. Barely get that out. Okay, landing lights are on, strobes on, pumps are on. All four magnetos are up. Hello, four Lee Mike, wind 310 at 8, runway 27, clear to land, traffic, so uh, Twin Comanche Department, runway 32, prior arrival. 27, clear to land, uh, we will use caution for the traffic, 564 Lima Mike, and 564 Lima Mike will be parking Atlantic Aviation. Four Lima Mike, roger, thanks. Airspeed's good. Keep your gear down for a little longer. Time up runway, gear up. For four Liam Mike for a landing long landing approved. On landing approved, thank you. Uh five six four Liam Mike.
I'm using the IFD 10.3 trainer for this video because my number two camera really didn't give me clear enough shots to use. Let's enter our flight plane into this trainer for now, uh, which is the same process identical to what I use in the airplane. For this flight, I enter the flight plane several ways, directly into the IFD 550, into ForeFlight, where I then uploaded it to the IFD, and then into the iPad IFD 1000 app, and then uploaded to the IFD. I also did the reverse, where in both of those apps, I downloaded or made sure that the flight plane transferred downstream. So let's get started. First, the green highlight on the IFD FMS button shows we're on the FMS page, and the highlighted tab above it shows that we are on the flight plan tab of the FMS page. So this is the current flight plan on the right-hand side, and we just entered from Wilmington, Delaware, down to Delaware Coastal with a few additional waypoints. The flight plan legs itself are shown in white because we haven't activated the flight plan. Additionally, the GPS status in the upper right is yellow as an additional indication that no flight plan is active. I had actually reported that as a technical problem, uh, thinking from my Garmin experience that I wasn't receiving satellite signals and I, I couldn't enter a flight plan until that turned green. Lesson learned. Uh, continuing, the comm section now has a secondary comm instead of always showing the nav frequencies. That's a data block choice. I'll show you how to do that momentarily. I really like this. Press the lower left knob to display the nav frequencies. Next up is the traffic thumbnail. Again, I really like this. I don't think I had this before. Um, can't go back and check, but um, it's really a wonderful thing because now I can use that SVS more, the synthetic vision display, and it will show me not only where the traffic is graphically, but I can look to that thumbnail and tell how far away it is. I missed that piece of information, so I didn't use the SVS page because of that. Um, and then finally, press the activate the flight plan. That will turn the leg magenta, the first leg magenta, and that will also turn that yellow GPS indication in the upper right to green, and it will allow the autopilot to be used and GPS navigation to begin. Now let's go to the AUX page setup tab. First, the alert that you see there, that's where you'd set change or delete reminders like the oil change reminder we had talked about. I'm not going to go too much into that because it's, it really is pretty straightforward when it works and it appears to be working. Data blocks, that's where I want to focus a little bit on. That's where you set up what we'd like to see on each display. Um, and I've found some new features there I want to um, highlight. Select and deselect the COM B lock standby number two. Notice if you don't select this, you will not have room for the traffic thumbnail and that'll just disappear. I really like having that number two standby in the comm anyway, because how often do you need to have the, the nav frequencies right in front of you? I like the SVS page um, now that I have traffic that I can use. I think I did have uh, the traffic thumb. I know I did have the traffic thumb on the right hand side. I just wasn't aware that I could put it on the left hand side and I never really used it on the SVS page, to be honest, now at this stage. I don't remember if I could before or not, but I saw somebody put this display up with this version, and it works for me. So I have the traffic thumbnail on the left-hand side combined with the traffic on the SVS page, and now it's all of a sudden much more useful to me. Tap on that data tab on the right-hand side to enhance the SVS display. It slides that data tab out and gives you all that useful information. With the current data block selections, this is what it might look like. And here's a good example in, uh, in the SVS display of traffic appearing. Uh, the traffic appears to be 300 feet low. And uh, not only do I get a visual depiction, but I also get the rings on the left-hand side for the thumbnail. I tap on that, and it moves from 6 to 2. And I get the distance and spacing um, information on that traffic. In the airplane, I was actually experimenting with uh, approaches, loading them from various applications up to the IFD and then downloading them back and seeing how well they synchronized. Um, it's better than it was before, it's faster than it was before, and it does work. However, I'll caution you, you have to remember to activate it each time. Because at one point I thought I had activated it and I didn't and the autopilot was just in wing leveler mode. Um, so just be mindful of that. I haven't played with the direct to function including altitude. That's a jet-like function, can't wait to use that. Um, I'll have to get to that later. Uh, most of my experimentation was done solo on VFR days, and even though that's safer in general, you have a lot more traffic to deal with, and you have to pay attention. So 
Um, I didn't get everything done that I wanted to do, but I'll, you know, I got a buddy coming in town next week. I'll do it then, period. Um, I did do a visual approach with lateral and vertical guidance. Uh, I'm not sure what the left and right based visual uh, component of those approaches does for you, uh, but I'll find that more. Uh, I'll find out more about that in a seminar I'm taking tomorrow with Abaddon. One thing I will mention is a designated waypoint. I thought I had a problem with my unit the other day because uh, I put designated waypoint in there, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what I did accidentally. And I got nothing. It, it just didn't register. So I don't understand what that option is on the data blocks. Um, but more playing will be required to figure that out and a little bit of reading. Uh, yep, maybe a lot of reading. Okay, so let's wrap this up by replacing the active approach um, with a visual approach from runway 22. And we'll use a right base um, because that's the direction we're coming from. We're going to replace that active approach. And I'll increase the speed and zoom you on down there um, so that we'll see that we have no glide slope indication. That's what it'll look like going in. We're currently in heading mode, more or less. Um, and then uh, once we get established laterally, we'll see that glide slope come alive. What I don't know is whether my autopilot, here you see a CDI deflection coming in telling you how far out it is. But what I don't know is if my autopilot will actually fly it. I believe that it will. It's, I believe it's getting a solid um, signal from the radio, so the autopilot's not going to know any different. I'm going to try that out. Um, some more exper experimentation to do. Uh, we'll take this on in for the landing. And we'll wrap up this video. It's gotten a little bit long, but um, a lot of good content. Um, I would like to have gotten some actual footage that was really good quality, but I think I had the camera too far back. Um, another lesson learned and get a little bit more time and experience with these things.